Hey, I'm Alex Everett. I'm the owner of Everett Building here in Jackson, Wyoming. I'm Enrico Bonilaudi of Emu Systems. Uh, it's a spec project here in Jackson. I'm working with KT814 Architecture and Emu Systems. We're on a beautiful east-facing slope with a lot of light. We're trying to build a, a 4,600 square foot house with a connected garage that uh, aims to be the first passive house in Teton County. The Emu North American Pilot Program is uh, intended to help builders build their first uh, passive houses in different climate zones. So it's kind of a, a guided way uh, to delivering certified buildings uh, where the construction system is designed to meet the uh, climate specific conditions of the site. So in this project having uh, been located in Jackson, Wyoming in climate zone seven, we have a double star wall uh, with vapor open insulation and an, an internal surface cavity that you don't see in the walls uh, here just yet. The most difficult part of designing a building in such a cold climate is to provide a suitable thermal protection to all components of the thermal envelope. Now, windows, doors, skylights being holes in your building envelope, you do need to provide good enough quality for them. So uh, while code in this climate prescribes a 0.32 or 0.30 U-value window, you're looking at 0.11. So considering higher performance in the transparent components compared to cold windows. For me, the items that have been most new about building this passive house have been the double stud wall system. So the sequencing of the framing, um, having the carpenters do insulation before each level of framing, detailing the air barrier that you see behind us, all the taping, uh, the origami that goes into all that, and then selecting the windows has really been the critical part. And we're really looking forward to the high quality windows, uh, triple pane. I would say those are the, the main three things that have sort of been a learning curve. We're using the uh, Intello Plus for the interior air barrier. We're using the uh, Tescon Vana tape to uh, seal all the junctions. Then outside, we're using the Minto 1000 for the WRB. And again, we're using the Tescon Vana for the wrap. Downstairs in the basement where we had uh, some connections to concrete and some irregular surfaces, we used the uh, Viscon fiber. So that's a liquid applied um, product. And that was a big lifesaver for some of those, you know, more tricky junctions. So we're looking at the transition at the an internal floor where we have the air barrier that is the Intello on the warm side of the assembly saw on the inside of the wall. And with the penetration of the floor framing, it would be extremely costly and very hard to get a continuous air barrier to go through. So what we have the framers do is to install a piece of the air barrier over the top plate of the wall before they frame the uh, floor and so they, they can wrap it around the floor and may have a continuous single air barrier to go along the uh, envelope. One of the challenges with high performance buildings is, is that we use super insulation in the walls, roof. These wires um, are connected to sensors um, that monitor the moisture content of the wall sheeting to track the relative humidity and temperature of said sheeting and keep track of any risks for biological decay of the sheeting because it is so insulated. This is part of what we do in the EMU pilot program. The census is, is part of the EMU monitoring package that we implement across all projects that participate in the program. We enjoy working with the Minto 1000. It's, uh, it has a nice handle to it, number one, as opposed to a Tyvek, you know, that's very noisy and tears. Um, this stuff um, is easy to put up. It uh, can has a long exposure rating. It'll you know be several months until we clad, and this this stuff will be fine. The tape, um, the, the Tescon Vana, uh, works beautifully. Extremely sticky stuff, and it went on nicely even in the middle of the winter. We we did all this work with the air barrier and the WRB, um, you know, in the coldest months, and it was. Uh, just fine. So this type of membrane is tied to liquid water but it's very open to water vapor so it, it allows the assembly to dry out via evaporation of vapor but it does not let any rain water or any liquid water penetrate into the assembly. This project has been one of the most intriguing and challenging ones in our pilot program because it's located in climate zone 7. 
So uh, with certain building components, there are some specific challenges to be met in order to meet passive hour standard and to provide occupants with thermal comfort and avoiding mold condensation overall.